Today we'll be hearing from Jeff Chilson. He's speaking from the Advanced Communication Series Manual, Speaking to Inform. This is the first project from the manual, the Speech to Inform, and will be five to seven minutes in length. Jeff's goal is to inform us. He looks to, identif he looks to help us identify potential skin cancers and more importantly, prevent them. Jeff's, sorry. I need, <clears throat> First, I need to start out. I need to read a bit of the small print here for Jeff. Jeff is not a doctor. He does not play one on TV, and he has not recently slept at a Holiday Inn Express. <laughs> Any part of this presentation should not be taken as professional medical advice. Always seek the opinion of qualified medical professional of any health-related questions. Wow! <laughs> 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 speed and everything. <laughs> so please help me welcome Jeff Chilson. <laughs> How much time did you want to list up? Standard, quite a Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. Summer is coming. In those glory days, spending those times outside, having all kinds of activity, they're going to be here soon. But have you given any consideration how much sun is too much? Skin cancer in particular is on the rise, and particularly amongst young people ages 18 to 39. In fact, let me read this, this little statistic here from the Rochester Epidemiology Project. They're in Minnesota, and they're involved with the Mayo Clinic. And they are reporting that the cases of first-time skin cancer diagnosis among men aged 18 to 39 has increased four times since 1970. And among women, it has increased eight times. So it pays to pay attention to be sun safe all year round. So today I'd like to take a few minutes just to discuss this important topic. Let me start with a little bit of my personal experience. When I was in college, I worked for BP as an intern. And one time I had to report to one of the chemical facilities as for a fitness for duty examination. And during the course of the examinations, looking heart and lungs, making sure they can be exposed to chemicals, the nurse there said, it looks like you have a couple spots here on your skin that are a little suspicious. Might not want to have them checked out. I'm 20 years old. I'm like, yeah, whatever. But I mention it in, pass in passing to my parents. They, of course, exhibit the appropriate response. They freak out. They send me right away to a dermatologist, and he said, one of these does look a little suspicious to get it taken care of. Fortunately, it didn't turn out not to be cancerous, but ever since that point in time, I paid a little bit more attention to how much sun I'm getting on my skin day in and day out. From the American Cancer Society, they actually list three different types of cancer. I'm going to read these so you kind of understand what the different three types are, and a little bit about, in some ways, how hard they are to identify. The first kind is called a basal cell carcinoma. These often look like flat, firm, pale areas or small raised pink or red translucent, shiny, waxy areas that may bleed after a minor injury. They may have one or more abnormal blood vessels, a lower area in the center, and or blue, brown, or black areas. A second type of skin cancer is called a squamous cell carcinoma. These may look like growing lumps, often with rough, scaly, or crusted surfaces. They may also look like flat, reddish patches in the skin that grow slowly. And there's a third type of skin cancer. It's probably one that we've heard most of. It's called a melanoma. And these are centered around like a normal forming mole that starts to exhibit some characteristics. And they use an ABCD rule to help identify whether or not they're suspicious. A stands for asymmetrical. Is the mole itself, does it have a nice well-defined shape, circular, oval, or is it kind of irregular in shape? It's asymmetric, it's suspicious. And then look at the border of it. If it's circular, and then it starts to move across that border, then it becomes suspicious once again. The third one is C for color. And if it's uniform in color, typically might be considered fine. But if it's variant in color, then once again, they start to say that might be suspicious. And last is D for diameter. And that depends on how what size it is. If it's more than six millimeters, typically they say, about the size of a pencil, once again suspicious. 
So those are the three types of carcinomas as they're defined there by the American Cancer Society. And as you can understand, it takes someone who is very perspicacious to understand just what is a normal or abnormal market on their skin. So therefore, just like Benjamin Franklin said, ounce prevention is worth a pound of cure. So pay attention to how much sun exposure you get. American Cancer Society recommends three very simple, practical <coughs> steps everybody can take at any point in time to reduce their exposure to ultraviolet rays. First one, of course, is use your sunscreen, use it properly, or sunblock, something we're called sunblock. <coughs> Use one with at least an SPF rating of 30. If you happen to travel internationally, though, be aware that other countries use different SPF ratings. But here in the States, at least 30 or more. Then you need to follow it and apply it according to directions. Put it on before you go out into the sun so it has time to absorb in the skin. And make sure from that point on that you apply it every two hours. That's typically what they say. And if you are at the beach or swimming, make sure you, once you've gotten wet, you got back out and put it back on. Or if you're doing some sort of heavy workout and you're sweating, make sure you reapply it frequently because it is going to wash off, wash off, excuse me, even if it says sweat proof or waterproof. Next, wear appropriate clothing. If you want to do your exposure, wear appropriate clothing. Wear long sleeves, pants, as long as you can stand it. Next one, wear a hat. This is, this is my favorite sun hat. This is the one I wear whenever we're out at the zoo or the out for hiking. It's kind of my outdoor adventure hat. Fits the theme. The boys love it. But the wider the brim, the better. This hat is actually advertised to have an SPF rating of 50. So I can wear that all day and, and be comfortable. One thing to be cautious of, though, not just choosing the right clothing, but pay attention to what clothing you are wearing. Bicycle helmets have holes in the top. So I'm going to be concerned about getting more exposure sun on my head, especially if I'm out on a long ride. And this one is for parents and me that's got kids. This is called a rash guard. If you don't have one of these, spend the 25 bucks to get it. This clothing, and there's lots of clothing that's coming out now that actually has SPF rating. This is SPF 50. If you spend time at the beach or at the pool, they have these for adults as well, this is well worth the investment. Because you don't have to say, oh, I just ran into the water, come back out, got to slather all out of the sunblock all over again. It's, it's, it's on, set it, forget it, so to speak. There's nothing like a, sun, or excuse me, a sunburn that is going to kind of ruin a family holiday. So take care of the kids. They're certainly gonna, not going to take care of themselves. So use your sunscreen, wear appropriate clothing. The last one is limit your exposure. The sun's rays are the most intense between 10 in the morning and between four and maybe five in the afternoon. Basically, if your shadow is shorter than you are tall, the sun's rays are at their most intense. So make sure you try and, if you can, avoid your activities and <coughs> out during that particular point in the day. Maybe you just don't mow the lawn during the afternoon, something like that. Give that some consideration. And of course, I put this one into the well duh file, but avoid tanning beds and sun lamps to reduce your exposure. So use your sunscreen. Wear appropriate clothing, limit your exposure. Let me conclude with these thoughts. You want to save your own skin. Use those common sense precautions, sunscreen, clothing, limited exposure. And if you have a question, make sure you see your doctor. I think it's great that insurance companies, employers are sending their staff out, making sure that they visit their doctor once a year. And that's what they're there for, to answer all kinds of questions. Because, like I say, we don't know necessarily what might be something we should be concerned about. And of course, take care of your children. They don't know enough what sun exposure is too much. Watch out for them. So a little bit of prevention, and you can help yourself enjoy these great summer days for many years to come. That's your best